Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Tetsuo the Iron Man, a Japanese cyberpunk horror movie from 1989 that was directed by Shinya Tsukamoto. Now I have covered all three of the Tetsuo movies in my Asian horror playlist, but Tsukamoto is my favorite director of all time, so it just feels right to do separate reviews for his films. So a mild-mannered salaryman, played by Tomaro Taguchi, is out for a drive with his girlfriend, played by Kei Fujiwara. He accidentally hits a deranged metal fetishist, played by Shinya Tsukamoto himself, and in the process becomes infected by a mysterious disease that slowly transforms his body into scrap metal. Equal parts Cronenbergian and Geiger-esque, Tetsuo the Iron Man combines striking, high-contrast, black-and-white photography, grotesque body horror, and stop-motion animation to create an unforgettable feature debut. So this movie is completely insane. It's also impossible to describe it to someone who has not seen it already. I mean, I guess you could say that if a nightmare were ever recorded on video, this would be it. It's an outrageously weird outlandish micro-budget film about a man whose body's in the process of transforming into a metallic being. So you get like wires and like metal ripping through his flesh and skin and it just gets worse and worse throughout the film. And if that weren't bad enough for this guy, a psychotic bad guy invades this guy's dreams and he's out for revenge. Now the actual story of this movie is a bit confusing. <laughs> Uh, if only because it's nightmarish, frenetic, and crazy. And you may be wondering how to interpret each individual scene, but the conflict, the overall conflict, is pretty easy to understand. And this is still highly entertaining, even if you decide to turn your brain off and just enjoy the ride. And this is kind of one of the things that I love about Shinya Tsukamoto. You know, even in a film like this, which some viewers may consider to be loud, obnoxious, and making no sense, he's still able to rope me in and entertain me. You know, unlike some other directors of weird movies, I think Tsukamoto somehow avoids making me angry and frustrated while watching his films. If most other directors attempted to make this movie, I would be like rolling my eyes, complaining about how pretentious or, uh, you know, insufferable it is or how obnoxious it is, but Tsukamoto directed it. So it somehow works. I mean, that's, sometimes that's how important a director is to the effectiveness of a film. Now, the runtime of this is only one hour and seven minutes. This is a fairly short film, and the pacing is relentless. Remember, this is a horror movie, first and foremost, and there are many memorable moments of insanity. There is some very wild violence and sex in this movie, but it's surprisingly bearable considering the non-use of color. I think the black and white presentation helps uh, to make it more palatable. Uh, still though, I did find some imagery here to be truly frightening. My personal favorite scene of the entire film is the train station sequence early on when our protagonist has a run-in with a crazed woman who touches a mysterious metal object. That scene is just freaking terrifying. Uh, but there's a lot to enjoy for fans of horror movies in this, and I will not spoil uh, the, whatever happens after that. Uh, the visuals are really neat, you know, uh, because it's shot in black and white. It, relent it relentlessly pummels you with an assault on the senses, is how I could describe it. Uh, you get some stop motion mixed in, fast forward photography, uh, truly a unique cinematic experience. Um, and of course, some of the themes revolve around technology and urbanization as well. So there's uh, quite a bit of atmosphere to this. I'm someone who associates a lot of things with seasons of the year. And I associate Tetsuo the Iron Man with the summer, the summertime. If only because the environment feels sweltering. You get like blistering metallic vis visuals, characters always sweating profusely, Lots of smoke and factory imagery. Definitely a movie to watch on like a hot summer day. Which is probably one of the reasons I'm reviewing it now for those of us in the U.S. The soundtrack is also very metal. Both literally and figuratively. Lots of percussion in this. 
So really to sum it up, anyone looking for a completely creative experience in film would do well to watch this. You know, it to this day, it could be the craziest film I've ever seen in my life. And it's it's up there. And I strongly recommend it if that's your mood. <laughs> it's currently available streaming on YouTube and Amazon. There's also that fantastic Blu-ray box set from Arrow Video that includes 10 of Tsukamoto's movies. And as always, folks, we'll see you next time.